All right, so Dr. Marin, uh, I obviously know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, but for our audience, can you just give them a brief idea of your specialty and sort of your niche uh, within that specialty, please? So I'm an interventional cardiologist. What that means is I put stents inside uh, people's blood vessels of the heart when they have a heart attack. Um, I also put different machines to help support their heart if they go into kind of what we call cardiogenic shock. Uh, I also, my niche specifically is opening up blockages, which have been closed for uh, more than three months. So think of a tunnel and if the tunnel collapses with all kinds of rock and sand and mud and clay, and it's just, you know, it's a collapsed tunnel. I find ways to get through the tunnel one way or the other. That's my niche speciality. In general, I think you can say I deal with a lot of whole body inflammation. Got it. Um... And I know, you know, in addition to that, you're already part of leadership uh, councils for the American College of Cardiology, the Society for Cardiovascular Angiography and Interventions. You're a director of the cath lab at the VA here. You're an associate professor for the university. So in addition to all of that, why are you specifically still, you know, taking time to do a podcast? Great question. So let me start with what I'm doing is completely separate from my teaching responsibilities at the medical university or the VA. They have no association. This is a personal uh, personal project. The reason why I'm doing it is almost after every time I do a procedure, when patients come for follow-up, the first question is like, what can I do right now? Uh, and to prevent future things from happening. And most of my patients, as you would know, are in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, sometimes even in their 90s. And they're all, all asking about what can I do now? What can I do next? They all want to reboot. And I feel that's great and that we should, they should, you know, take time to reset their life and kind of uh, go from there. But I also want to capture the 20 year olds and the 30 year olds and the 40 year olds and 50 year olds so that they don't have to come and see me or you when they are older and not have a heart attack. So that's prevention. But I think the best form of prevention is education. And I hope to bring scientific facts uh, evidence-based uh, uh, facts into this podcast. We are going to be interviewing people from different aspects, uh, bariatric surgeons, obesity medicine specialists, endocrinologists, exercise physiologists. We are hoping to get different people, lipidologists, um, uh, you know, j just get a very good discussion going. I want to learn. I never want to stop learning. And as I'm learning, I want to educate the audience who would want to listen to me as well. No, that's, uh, that definitely sounds pretty exciting. And I'm sure people are wondering, so where can they find you? When will new episodes be released for your podcast, et cetera? So you can find me wherever podcasts are usually found, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, uh, YouTube. There's going to be a video recording, so there'll be a YouTube channel as well. Uh, we are planning about on starting releasing three episodes, two to three episodes per week. I think of podcast listening as something you do when you're driving a car, going from point A to point B. So the podcast episodes are going to be 20 to 30 minutes uh, long. The conversation with the people I'm talking will, you know, maybe two, three hours long, but we are hoping to break it up into part one, part two, part three. So the audience get the full flavor uh, of what we are talking about. Got it. No, that's awesome. Um, and so uh, I know you've kind of focused, you know, uh, the focus is going to be on prevention. Sounds like you're very excited about discussing that with other specialists as well. Um, and before we wrap up here, just a few questions. So maybe more so for our um, younger listeners, but if you could go back and give yourself uh, some advice or one piece of advice when you were in your, let's say, late 20s or early 30s, uh, what would it be? Well, if I can go back and tell what I could tell myself right now, then I will say, can you please take care of yourself a little better? <laughs> because, you know, in our 20s and 30s, that's when I started residency. That's when I moved to the U.S. And I was in survival mode. And I'm sure most of, most of the young young people like you, you're in fellowship. I mm -hmm. see you guys, you're all in survival mode and you don't seem to think about what could happen or what you're doing to yourself and you're going to pay for it later. So if I, I would tell myself, don't drink the Coke Zeros, don't have the candy, 
exercise, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, it's not that, you know, don't live. I'm not saying that. Just try to be mindful about it a little bit more. Can Could I have done better in my 20s and 30s in taking care of myself? Definitely. I, uh, I definitely felt the pinch of it in my 40s. Um, and uh, if as a cardiologist who's done medical school, internal medicine training, general cardiology training, and interventional training, it was so difficult, then I can imagine how hard it is for a person who does not have the knowledge of all this. So I want to bring awareness to all this, everyone who's interested. Uh, and again, you know, I wish I had taken better care of myself when I was in my 20s and 30s, along with fighting for my career, yes. Right. No, and that makes sense. I mean, you know, obviously both of us know that, especially in South Asians, there's a genetic predisposition. And so, um, you know, focusing on the preventative aspects early on is uh, crucial at just sort of mitigating or minimizing our risk for um, cardiovascular events down the road. So uh, even with that being said, what would you say is, you know, the most important lesson that you've learned over your career or practice thus far in the field of medicine? So I think, you know, it's so funny. After all these years of education, it, it all goes back to the basic. Uh, the bottom line is you are what you eat and you are what you do with move with your life. So movement and food, I think these are the two cruxes. And we South Asians, you know, we are obesogenic. That is, you know, some of us have this great metabolism. They can eat whatever we want, we think, and get away with it. But we are obesogenic. That is, we can inflammation is happening inside us. Uh, so we have to be so much more careful with the westernization and this, uh, you know, uh, food farming going on and access to food with all our delivery systems and things like that. I think we have to be extremely mindful. I, in my personal opinion is we are where we were in the 1950s and 70s with regards to smoking, right? Everybody was smoking. It was considered fashionable. It was considered a weight loss tool. It was unregulated. Doctors were screaming that this causes cancer. It's bad for you, but nobody listened to us. And we are exactly in the same spot with regards to food uh, and access to food. And, you know, I recently saw a thousand uh, calorie chocolate chip cookie released by Subway. I mean, this is getting out of control, wow. uh, you know, so I can't. Yes, I want to fight all the big uh, food companies, but I don't know whether I'll win that fight. So I am taking my fight to the consumers uh, and and I want to just, you know, this is. I'm just shouting at the top of my voice. Let's all eat better. Let's all do better. Let's all reboot together. Right. No, no, that's uh, that's definitely exciting and impressive that even with all of your other duties, um, you're taking the time because I think, you know, we do need somebody to really push that message along um, given the prevalence of disease uh, in the South Asian community. And um, like you said, it's unfortunate, but when patients do suffer that event, then they're kind of trying to reboot when, the rebooting should have occurred a lot earlier in their lives. Absolutely. Like, you know, I, you know, we practice in Charleston, South Carolina. Most of my patients are not South Asian, but my South Asian patients are the youngest population. If mm -hmm. you look at my entire cohort of patients, they are the younger uh, age group. And that's why I thought it was important to uh, highlight how, how, how much of a high risk we are all at. And hopefully it sticks. Right. No, I totally agree. And so last question, um, I know you have a busy schedule ahead, but what's uh, one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's sort of starting out in your career or in your track? Well, be persistent, mm -hmm. be passionate about what you're doing. So, you know, uh, everybody asks me how I came to this. I never thought I'd be an interventional cardiologist. I initially thought I wanted to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. But I went into it and I was like, oh, I'm not sure I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Then when during my internal medicine training, I really thought I'm going to do critical care. Um, but 
once again, when I went into it, I, ha- I was having some residual post-traumatic stress disorder from, from my previous critical care experiences. And But when I went came into the cat lab, the light bulb went off. You know, it was like Harry Potter checking his wand, buying his wand or something <laughs> like that. So, you know, keep seeking till you find that light bulb moment. Don't choose a career path. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a nine to five job. And, you know, and uh, this is, you know, but if it, the nine to five job is a boring nine to five job you will never stick with it so find something which you are extremely passionate about which gets you up in the morning and then the rest will sort itself out got it no thank you so much for that and uh for your time here so i want to thank the audience for joining us on the inaugural episode of uh, reboot with dr rc marin um any final parting words dr marin uh, we we want this to be an interactive experience, so please find us in Instagram and Twitter. I will be at Dr. Arasi Marin. Uh, we will also have a monthly newsletter going on. Uh, so if anyone wants more access to it or want more information, that will also be a part. And po- post questions, topics. This is not medical advice. There is no doctor-patient relationship being formed here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I want to be very clear of it. This should not delay anyone from seeking medical care when they need it. Your doctor is the best person who can advise you. So uh, you never forget that. And with that, we'll look forward to, we'll put up the next episode pretty quickly. All right. Thank you so much.